This is Delta and Ad. And in today's video, I'll be reviewing all the creative 3D and compositing workflow. All of that inside of Blender and After Effects. Let's go. And before I start talking about the flavors, I have to tell you something. I haven't played Delta that much. Anyway, a couple of weeks before fully starting working on this project, I asked my followers over on Instagram, guys, what flavors should I make? Various. Some were normal, like strawberry, watermelon, apple, average flavors. But some were hmm, tricky because we had responses like ketchup, toothpaste, moss, chalk, wood. So I ended up with Chris watermelon, Ralze strawberry and Susie pineapple. Next thing is the song. And here's the thing. I wanted to make this commercial more real, more trustable, so I thought I might use some normal music, like, I don't know, from the stock. But then I had a second thought that it wouldn't be a Deltarune commercial without song from Deltarune, right? So I went on the Spotify, checked over the album, and I found two tracks. The first track was... <laughs> I can't recall what's the name of this one. And the second one was Fields of Hopes and Dreams. I ended up just working with this one. So now let's talk about the labels. So I simply downloaded the pixel art of the characters. I took the Undertale label, changed a few elements, changed the name of the drink and changed the flavor of the drink. And voila, basically with these simple steps, I got my labels done. So now the storyboard. So this time I took a bit different approach. I wasn't necessarily doing this storyboard fully i just looked for the reference on the internet screenshotted what i like the most and then tried to replicate these angles maybe try something new right inside of blender that's why i don't have really a storyboard i just have the almost ready shots so just rendered these and went straight to animatic and now i'm just trying to match these shots with the fields of hopes and dreams and i found one thing i couldn't find a spot in this song that will let me end the commercial without any rough cut because normally what i would do is just find a song find the first i don't know 20 30 minutes of the clip and then try to find a matching part at the end of the song so you know i can end the commercial flawlessly right but this wasn't the case in in this case so what i ended up doing was finding some information on the internet how to end a song with an echo and i found a really good tutorial made by josh olufemi highly recommend if you're into commercials and you sometimes cannot cut the song perfectly that's what you should do so now is the time to jump into blender and we are talking about the real job right now so i really want to tell you about a few things before we fully start these things apply almost to every single shot so i don't have to repeat myself later on quick movement at the start and the end of the shot you can do this with adding two keyframes for the rotation then in graph editor change pivot point to individual centers Select both handles, rotate them and scale to your liking. Fingerprints and scratches on the can. Add roughness textures and normal maps with imperfections of your choice. In this case I have fingerprints and scratches. Plug roughness map to color ramp to decrease the contrast. Do the same thing with scratches. Change color space to non-color. Then add mix note, set it to add, factor to 1. Plug both maps to the mix note and plug it to roughness. With normal, add normal map note, set color space to non-color, plug the texture to the node and the node to normal in principled BSDF. Then set the strength to whatever you like. Almost all scenes use motion blur. Here you can see a comparison between scene with motion blur and without. Do you see the difference? I use light linking. The simplest explanation of light linking is that you can set one light to have effect on objects that you selected. For example here I have different lights for can and fruits. It gives so much more control. Gradient light. To make sure the lighting is very professional I use gradient lights. That way I don't have any sharp reflections that look very amateurish. So let's Let's start with the scene 
one. Here we have the can rotating and this is the crease can, this is the opening scene and we have the can with the label, scratches etc. We got here four lights and I also have the plane that is reflecting this but this is not really necessary in this case because we have a rather light background because it's colorful but if you're dealing with black lights it's important to add this plane as a very subtle edge so you do not miss the shape of the product when you are lighting. If I disable the plane, you can see that it kind of blends with the background. But when I add this again, you can see that there is some line that is indicating the shape of the can. Next, let's go with these lights one by one. And we get the key one light shining from the side of the... Also, the camera is rotated because I'm again not rotating the can. I'm rotating the camera. Second light is another key and then we have fill light which is adding just a slight light from the bottom and then we have a one light and this is a different approach that I took in my previous projects because I thought that I should really indicate the shape of the can itself. So I decided I will start adding one more light and now I'm adding the light to indicate the shape that's going on here. You can see that lighting here very important i think now from the animation perspective I have a couple of keyframes for the location these are very small keyframes as it's really subtly going in this direction but more important is the rotation keyframe it's again starting really fast and that's how this graph editor looks like very important thing to use graph editor always use graph editor if you only know how to do this and if you don't learn this it's important so that's the first scene very basic scene number two here we have a little more stuff going on i have lights with light linking this this one light is only affecting the backdrop key light is affecting the backdrop right so here I have the, we got the key that is lighting from the side, it's lighting the can and lighting the backdrop. I really wanted to get this shadow here going on. Next light is the rim. I got the fill light and then I have the backdrop lighting. So let's see how it looks from the animation perspective. So you basically have the can animation itself and the second one is the camera animation. So starting from the can, here we have only where you are popping the can and it's done with shape keys. Adding the bases, so you're clicking the plus 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 the plus for the basis then plus for the key one and key two and then we have to slide these all the way to one and go to edit mode and just start sculpting the second position so we have the one position and the second position second position is where this part goes down and this part goes up and then we are animating two different shape keys more tricky i would say is the camera animation if you select the camera you can see that we have track two Basically what track to is, it makes the camera always point towards some object. And here this object is empty. So if we move the camera freely, you can see that it always is trying to point. We are animating the location and being honest, it is really hard for me to just say you how to do this now because it's really tricky part. You have to add keyframes, delete keyframes, just see what works because here we are with dealing with this track too. So here it's more I think about just looking what looks good. Really important to make sure that the movement is smooth is to add the motion path. Motion path basically shows me how the motion looks throughout the scene. So I can ensure that there are no weird glitches like. And to add this thing, you have to select your object, go to object properties and then motion path. And then I guess here is something like calculate paths. And then whenever you change anything, you have to click update all paths. Or you can also click this little dot auto keying, and then you can move your camera and already see how the motion path changes scene three. So this one is a little bit complicated. Here we are dealing with fluids. I'll go to the very beginning where it starts. Here I have two emitters and then I have obstacles all the way. And these obstacles make these fluid going separately. As you can see here, if I hide obstacles, it's more obvious. So it's now going very randomly, very cool way. Just the force field. I mean, I can show you these settings. But that's more of a specific thing. Lastly, I have also the Geonote setting for these fruits and that's basic cube. And then we have a 
geonode setting. Really simple thing. So now let's see the scene number four. I don't really know what to tell here as it's basically this whole thing is a bot asset. You can buy this on Blender Market, I guess, for some around 10 bucks. So going real quickly, lighting, simple HDRI for po from Poly Hyven. And we also got the camera switch. So we are switching cameras with markers. The only crazy thing is that I have 150 millimeter focal length on one and 80, 80 on the first one and on the second 150 millimeters or just bigger zoom. Next scene by. So here we have again two cameras and here I'm rotating basically only the Z Euler rotation. You can see that here. Only Z rotation. Strawberries. I took from this asset from the previous scene and just added the flow, which is an asset from Curvify by CG Matter, another good asset on the Blender market. Just made a spiral and let these strawberries go. All cameras have the depth of field and depth of field is this empty, which is just blurring a bit the background or just blurring these strawberries. If I zoom this, you can see that it is really, really blurred. It just helps to focus on what matters most. So if we agreed on that, the animation is very simple. Let me show you the light. Let's go with this light one by one. So this is the key, another key, two keys. Then I got one light from lighting from the bottom adding the shape. Now I got one light that is adding the shape to the top of the cam. And then I got one more fill to the middle. That's it for the first scene. And the second scene, we got these lights. And if I go one by one, this is the key, another key. Here I got, here we got the light only for this edge. Here we got another light, very subtle. And here we got a main light. So now we are in the scene number six. From the lighting perspective, we have only three lights but these are very strong since it's a relatively huge scene i would say here we have three different lights and almost all of these lights besides this one is somewhat colored so let me show you what these lights do one by one this one is adding just this tint and these are accenting the shape of the can really cool another one another purple one this is adding more of the light so this has more function i would say than the previous one and we got the key which is very strong and it is adding these cool shadows that's it more i would like to focus on these settings so i am actually using here geometry nodes you can see the setup right here it doesn't look really that much interesting we just have two instance on points we got two objects and you can see that there goes some input to selection basically input is the vertex group and it goes to selection so it says to the instance and points do not generate points where you have the vertex group so that's why we have on one point we have pineapple and on the second point we got the can and how it's done we basically do have the plane we got the plane with this interesting pattern if i disable the geo notes you can see that right now and last thing is the camera animation so here we are not adding really any keyframes to the camera itself we're just getting the depth of field controller and it is also the camera controller if we look at the graph editor you can see just two things the Z Euler rotation and the Y Euler rotation. Z Euler rotation is responsible for this kind of rotating the can. And again, this is very, very dynamic start. And here we have this. And this one is done with the Y Euler rotation. Again, very simple thing. We are just animating the empty that is parented to the which is parented to the camera. Scene number seven. Here we got five cans, and these are basically rotating in a way that kinda in the middle of the motion, you can see some more. I did this very in a very simple way. So I just took one can, rotated this in a way I wanted, and duplicated them, and put them in a way that it would look good from the camera perspective. I didn't really care about these objects overlapping or something like that. Duplicated them, and then selected all of them, and you can see, that the animation is the same it's just the ending point it's ending in a different spot making this thing kind of you know offset it you see that i think they all start they all start the same but on a frame three they kind of start separating and then it looks super cool because you have 
few different movements. Lighting, very simple, and go through them very quickly. We again have some like HDRI accent, but we got one light, second light, just two lights from the sides. We got one light to just kind of lighten up middle. And last light is just adding a slight touch from behind. So that's it. Now let's go with the scene number eight. Here we got this kind of circle made with cans. And the way it's done, it's actually with geometry nodes. So we have one object and this object is the can. So I can show you the GeoNode setup. Basically how it works, it's that I got this ID, got some map ranges, gradient texture. If I have to be completely honest, I don't know how to really communicate this to you, but I can highly recommend you one tutorial on CrossMind Studio. I'll put the link in the description and this guy really well explains this idea. So basically, we got the animation with geometry nodes and I'll tell you a little bit about the lighting. So let's go. One light is adding just the accent, again accent light, again accent light. The key. So I get two keys and all these others are just accent lights, just like that. And because I have some dark spots here, that's why I added this HDRI, as simple as that. So now we got the scene nine, and here we have a total crazy stuff with all these different lights. I have like seven lights for only the can. I got lights for only these fruits, got a couple of lights for them, nothing really crazy. And I also have one HDRI that is kind of giving the ambient here. Let's turn this off for now. As for these lights, go one by one. Here I got the light that is lighting from the bottom and the side. Also on this side of screen, you can see how these lights look like. This one is again, adding this nice surface change on the can. It's really crazy once I really understood that thing. Here are some accent lights. So these lights are giving really subtle effect, but all of them packed together, these look really, really nice. For the fruits, again, I'm using the geonodes to just scatter these fruits on the volume. And for the animation, I do have actually three different scenes here because I go to the material preview for faster, faster preview. I got Chris watermelon, then I got Rousey with strawberries, Susie with pineapples. And the way I change these is as following. Basically, I am using the mix node and in the mix node, I have this factor. And this factor is what changes the label. So here I have two labels plugged into the mix node and using the factor, I am changing these labels. And then I also added keyframes to change this, right? So that's how I'm changing labels. And here I will show you how I'm changing fruits. Fruits are changed with switch. Here we have the switch node. Whenever I want to change these fruits, I just add keyframe and next keyframe here I have the switch. Animation is just the camera one axis Y location. Also the can is rotating but nothing really crazy. It, it just starts very dynamically but then it just dissipates and the camera is making a really dynamic zoom as here again. Here's this tactic with rotated curves. Last scene, scene number 10, the simplest one. We got the backdrop, we got a few lights. Not really going deep with these as it's pretty similar to what we had in scene number two. And here we, for the animation, we just got the very dynamic movement on the one location. So now we have to go into After Effects and put these bricks together, right? So let's go. So welcome in Adobe After Effects. We got the scene number one, which are just frames rendered, right? And we got the lumetri color in this one. Now just adding some contrast, sharpen, etc. Simple stuff, you can see it here. We got the background made in Photoshop. So I was basically taking two colors and blending them together using brushes, using gradient tool. The music I did in the way I told you. So we got the two clips and this one is the echo for the last one. Okay, so that's the scene number one. Scene number two, here we got just frames, adjustment layer. I added this because I kind of didn't like how the Chris looked like because it was kind of washed off the colors. So I drew the mask and also animated this mask. So as long as it goes, you see, you can see that it changes the, the shape, right? To make this more uh, working with the 
animation of the can. So that is it. So let's go to the scene number three. Here we have the transition from the RTFX generator. Really cool stuff. And we got the SFX from the same pack. So it just, you know, adding some, some sound effect, right? Here we got the scene with fluid. Again, we have the, you have some bubbles, which is basically the footage. I got this one from pexels.com. So good stock. And with the blending mode, I just blended this with the background. And the background is made with four color grading. It has keyframes. Whenever the scene changes to just make the color kind of more follow the fluid, right? And again, we have some SFX next scene. Also the background for from Photoshop and Lumetri colors for the scene. Basically, if you're watching this part, you already might know that the workflow in After Effects is very simple. Lumetri color, background, transitions, nothing crazy, right? So again, here's the next scene. Again, background from the and Lumetri colors and SFX. Again, transition from this pack. This one's really cool. Again, Lumetri color, transition, bam. One more transition. And as you see here, every single thing has the motion blur. Just look how you can see it here. That's the motion blur, essentially. Some mass effects, some Lumetri color. One more transition. And here we have three different backgrounds. And whenever the label and fruits change, the background changes as well. And last scene, just render and a short text on the bottom. So there is no caffeine, so you don't have to, oh no, I cannot drink this because this and because of that. No, it's no caffeine this time. Come on, you can drink this. The only thing is you can buy this. I'm sorry. And that is it for the After Effects part. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.